Stacking comments is a pain, but thankfully Cyril makes it a little bit easier for us. In 2023, I posted a video of how to stack comments manually in Cyril. That video is still relevant, so feel free to follow that instead if that's what you're more comfortable with. And those manual steps include converting your images, calibrating your frames, which has sub steps of calibrating your flats with biases and calibrating your lights with darks and flats, doing a background extraction on each of those frames and registering images twice, once for the stars and once for the comet, and then stacking your images, stretching them, and then combining them all into one masterpiece. Although there's no easy way to automate everything, we can still use scripts in Serial to automate some of those steps. So the script that I'll be showing you today will help you convert those images, calibrate your frames, as well as do a background extraction. The script will also register your frames and do a stack, but we're going to ignore those last two steps and just be thankful that we can automate the first three. And instead, we'll do some manual steps after that's done, which will include using StarNet++ to remove stars from all of our frames, and registering images twice, once for the stars and once for the comet, and then manually stacking the stars, stacking the comets, we'll stretch each of those frames, we'll crop them, and then we'll combine them all within Cyril. We will use my smart scope script today, but this will work whether or not using a smart scope or not. I'll be using data captured with my Asgard 71F and my ASI 2600 MC Pro captured with Nina. If you'd like to support me and my work, check me out on Patreon and on Buy Me A Coffee. Apologies in advance for talking really fast in the video. That was my fifth or sixth time recording the entire process, so I got a little crazy. So let's get to the demo. So I have Cyril open here, and I have my working directory set to this comet A6 directory. And if you look here, we have four folders here, lights, flats, stars, and biases. And inside there, I have my appropriate frames. I'm only stacking 50 60-second light frames tonight. So in Serial, we want to make sure that the parent folder is the home directory. Then once we go into Serial, we'll go to Scripts, Python Scripts, Preprocessing, and Astronomy Smart Telescope PP. If you don't have it, there are several videos showing you how to install this and how to get this to run. Now, whether or not you're using a smart telescope or not, I would just recommend just keeping it at the default, whatever it is, S30 or S50, because the telescope is mainly used for SPCC if you need it. And for some of them, it's used for plate solving as well, which isn't as important if you're just sticking with the default. So I'm just going to keep it at S30, even though I'm using an Ascar 71F and a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro to take my images and not an actual Z. WOC star S30. So yeah, as we know, I have my darks, flats, and biases. So I'm going to check these. If you don't have one or more of these, you don't have to check them, especially if you're using a, a C star. Do not click on clean up files because we want to be able to access our background extracted and registered frames. That's basically what we're trying to automate here. And the only other thing I'm going to do here is check background extraction because I want that BKG underscore frames files or that sequence. Now the max files for batch is only for Windows machines if you have more than 2000 frames, if you have like a whole bunch of 10 second exposures. Otherwise, just leave it alone, leave it at 2000 and let it do its thing. I'm not going to drizzle, use filters or feather and definitely not SPCC. And I'm just going to let this run. All right, this is complete. If we do an auto stretch, this is what we get a smudged comet. But we're going to ignore this output completely because we don't need it. If we look at our directory here, we have now have a process directory and that's what we're after. Inside here, we have a bunch of sequences and we're going to go back to Cyril. We're going to change our home directory to the process directory, click open, and then we're going to go into our sequence tab and click on search sequences. And we have all of these sequences. The only one we we'll really need is this R underscore BKG, which is our registered background extracted calibrated lights that has our stars calibrated, stars aligned, and the little comet here. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove all the stars from all of these frames. And you need StarNet for this. If you don't have StarNet, if you want to confirm that you have StarNet, click on Menu Preferences. We're going to go to Miscellaneous and just make sure that the StarNet location is set, that you have the right executable. If you don't, download it. But also feel free to skip this step. It's just that when you stack these later on, your stars are going to be smudged. So. I'm going to go to image processing, start processing, start net removal. Make sure you click on apply to sequence and it doesn't matter which one you pick here and then click on execute. And this will run StarNet on each of these frames and remove the stars from each of these frames, so making it a little bit easier. And now that I'm talking more about it, I probably don't even need the registered BKG sequence here. I could have just gone with the BKG sequence because we have to register them anyway. So my script saves one less step than I thought. So let's execute. So that finished. And as we can see, I have now a new starless 
sequence and a star mask sequence. Star mask has all my stars and star list has all of my comments. And you can see Starnet actually removed the core from some of these frames, but not all of them. It's fine. But I'm going to kick back on the first frame here. I'm going to go to registration. Make sure the registration method is set to comet asteroid. I'm going to create a little box around the core where the core is supposed to be. Click object one, pick object one. I'm going to open my frame list on the bottom right hand side, go all the way to the bottom to frame 50. Close this and then I'm going to just going to move the box over so that it's there and then click pick object two and you'll see it gives you a little delta, delta X, delta Y basically tells you how much of a slope this comet moved in this grid here and it's going to create a new sequence for me, a new register sequence called comet and I want to click on go register right and that register and now we can go to stacking and I'm going to leave this as average stacking with rejection, additive with scaling, Winsorize sigma stacking. The best sigma values I've found is three low and a five of high so that we get some less rejection on the tail itself. No weighing. I'm going to do all of the sequence, all of the images, and I'm going to click on RGB equalization. And I'm going to save the sequence as comet stack. And I'll overwrite and I'll click on start stacking. All right, that worked. That only took about 18 seconds. And when you zoom in, you can see the comet core and the tail. It looks really nice. And one of the things I noticed with Starnet is that even with the stars removed, there are still ghosts of the stars that are remaining, which is fine. It's actually a lot better than it would be without the stars removed. So I'm going to have to deal with this. Uh, I'm going to redo this in Pixinsight later on so we can do a comparison there. Okay, so I have my comet stack. I'm going to go back to my sequence. I'm going to click on uh, the star mask sequence. I'm going to go to registration. I will do a global star alignment this time. Leave everything default and then I'm going to click on go register. Our right, registration is complete. We're going to go to stacking. I'm going to do a uh, one star sigma clipping of three and three instead. And then I'm going to do star stacked. Star stack and click start stacking. All right, so now that ended as well. So we can, you know, this is already an auto stress. So we're going to go back to our conversion tab. We're going to click, we're going to open our process directory. I'm just going to do this by date modified. So I have my star stack and I have my comet stack. So I'm just going to bring those two over into here. And I'm going to create a sequence and I'll just call it comet star. Call it whatever you want quickly converts them. So now if I open my frames list, I have these two side by side. And the reason I did this is because I want to crop this so that these are both the same size and I can combine them later more easily. It doesn't matter what you do, how you frame it. I'm going to click right click crop and then crop sequence. I'll give, it'll give me a cropped sequence. Great. And now we can see that they're both still the same. And now there are two ways you can go about this. You can actually combine these right now by going to image processing, star processing, star recomposition, find one of these frames. So this is going to be uh, cropped comet two and then cropped comet one. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, you can mess with the local intensity and the stretches here, but but I don't know if it's a bug or not, but when I make changes here, it actually doesn't update as much as it should or much as I, as much as I'm expecting here. So it's a little bit strange. So I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save anything. And I'm actually going to open each of those frames one by one and stretch them manually. So I have my cropped comet one and crop, crop comet two. So I'll just open the second one first, which is the star stack. This one, I'm going to switch this to linear go to image processing stretches. This one is getting just a basic histogram auto stretch. Nothing too fancy. I'll close this and then I'll save this as a, I'll call this a star stretched fits. And now I'll open my other one, which is going to be crop comet star one. So now I have my comet stack here. So now before I do anything, I want to click on auto stretch and I actually want to remove the gradient here using Graxpert. So if you don't have Graxpert stat, uh, the script, get that as well. I highly recommend it. And I'm just going to keep everything the default. I'm just going to do default background extraction. 
and this is going to clear up the gradient that we see here from there you go that was pretty qu quick and easy right pretty quick and easy i can also if you want i can also go to python scripts go back to graxpert and do a denoise because if we zoom in we can see there's quite a bit of noise here so we can do a little bit of denoise see if we can remove some of that noise all right, that completed. Now we can actually uh, undo and redo and see what happens. So it looks like the denoising actually made the stars here a little bit worse, but the comet tail actually looks a little bit better. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit brighter. So it's uh, it's it's you know you have to decide whether or not it's worth it for you or not. I'm gonna keep it just because this is a demo. I'm gonna go back to my linear state. Let's fill this, go to image processing, stretches, and then do a generalized hyperbolic stretch. I want to really quickly go through this, but I do have a quick and dirty video on how GHS, or at least how I do GHS, maybe it'll be helpful to you. So I'm just going to quickly go through this and not waste your time here. So let's fast forward. All right, this is my GHS stretch on this. I may have gone a little bit too crazy with this, but I just wanted to make the tail appear a little bit more. I can see it all the way to the edge, which is really nice, but I'm just really interested in like the double tail here and like a third one coming out here. Hopefully it translates well into the video, but I have this now and I'm going to click save as, and I'm going to call this my comet stretched. Great. All right, so now the easiest way to combine these will be to go to image processing star processing star recomposition and the background stretch can be either of these i'll click on my comet stretch because it does actually have a background and then my star stretch will be my star thing and this is pretty much all you need since this is already stretched we don't need to do anything else all of these are pretty well stretched and the only thing is that you may want to take this into gimp or photoshop to clean out the streaks here there are ways to get around this using various tools, but I think for the dem purposes of this demo to show you how you can stack a comet with a starry background, this is a nice demo. Um, if I wanted to make this a little bit better, I could probably move the black point quite a bit, but you know, that does clip some of the data, but you know, I could get something like this and you know, this, the tail looks kind of nice, but keeping in mind that I am clipping, clipping data here. There we go. Maybe this is better. Who knows? But I'll click on apply, click on apply, I'll close, and then I'll save this as my final comment stack. And now it is ready to be shared with you. And of course, you may also want to do some more denoising and other processing steps that you may normally do, such as saturation as well. You probably don't want to do remove green noise because that'll get rid of the green of the comet. So just as a final step and just to show you what you can do outside of Cyril, so you can see that the stars look a little bit weird. So I took this into Photoshop and try and smooth out the background a little bit. And here we go. You can see that it's not perfect, it's definitely not my best work, but I think the tail looks okay, but the background just looks a lot better than what we see in Cyril because of all the little star streaks. And I think the tail looks okay as well. Definitely not my best work, not high resolution. So when you see this online, it will be scaled down. So I hope that demo was helpful in showing you the exact steps you need to take in order to process a comet in Cyril. Of course, you have a lot of freedom when it comes to the stacking parameters and before or after you stretch your individual images, you can take it out to Photoshop or GIMP and do additional operations. And as a reminder, I still think that the night of October 20th to the morning of October 21st is probably the best time to see Comet Swan and Comet Lemon. I have a whole video covering that and Comet K1 Atlas as well. So there's still some time to capture these comets. And if you have captured them, you wanna share your images, consider joining our Discord server. The invite link is in the description below and share your images with us. And if you have any questions, if you want me to cover a specific part in a specific video later on, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, clear skies and happy comet hunting.